I am three plus key, your favorite social worker. Welcome back. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and comment below what you think about this expose. <laughs> so this morning I went to the Heart Church in Missoula, Montana. And I just uh, want to say I had a wonderful time. The music was fantastic. The preaching was right on time. And uh, let's get into it. So first I pulled up. I always get a little... <sighs> Nervous isn't the word, but I can be cautious whenever I go into new settings, uh, particularly in Montana. There is um, a diversity barrier, um, and sometimes you just need to be more cautious than other times. And so I walk into these types of situations just aware of my surroundings. However, I have gone to their food, their um, clothing closet before, and everyone's been lovely. So I knew at least I would run into some of those ladies. So that's how I entered into the building. The service said it started at 10 a.m. Your girl pulled up about 9.59 so I could slide in. <laughs> under the radar, but that's not what happened. I walked in and was immediately greeted by a lady at a table. She said, hi, how are you? Um, I actually knew her um, uh, from around town, and so we caught up briefly. She gave me the handout for the day, and introduced me to another lady and another lady who I happen to also know from around town. So now I'm familiar with two people, but even if I wasn't familiar with them, uh, they were super friendly, offered me donuts, coffee, and water, and just said, God bless you, enjoy the service. So that was terrific. Um, I went into the sanctuary, um, which was very warm and inviting. Saw somebody else that I knew from the food bank. He's a volunteer at the food bank. So that was great. Um, and it was just a friendly vibe, friendly introduction. I went over to uh, sit in the back pew, which I prefer to do in general. Um, just a lot of smiles. Um, just warm, you know, nobody was doing the like side glance, like who's this new person? If they did, they looked at me, smiled, some people waved and uh, carried on about their business. So I really like that type of warmth and, and positive um, vibe. The music started, y'all. It was the best yet. It was, I know, I'm always talking about the music because your girl likes to sing and do a little, hey, a little two-step in the pew, you know, uh, so it would be great. It's not necessary, <laughs> but it would be great if I could sing out loud and, you know, um, give a little snap, a little drum, you know, um, so the music was contemporary, the worship music was contemporary, um, I think they had a singer, a backup singer, a male vocalist who was playing the guitar, they had a drummer and somebody on the piano, um, so it was a vibe and the words up on the screen, um, the congregation, the amount of people in the service was probably like no more than 30. If I could call it maybe even about 20 people, um, 
which I like. It it wasn't a good a, the a good setup for anonymity. If you're looking to be known, this would be a good church for you. If you're looking to fade into the background and just be an observer, um, which I really wouldn't recommend for your own fellowship purposes, but if that's your thing, there is about 20, 20 to 30 people there, um, but all friendly. So they pause the worship music and it's time to greet people, um, by then, um, a lady I had known from the clothing closet, she came by and, and we had a nice chat. It wasn't awkward. It was just very lovely. Other people from the congregation also introduced themselves and um, it went by really quickly. That's usually the part, I, I can't lie, I will come into church late. So that I don't have to do that meet and greet part. I'm not a fan. It's awkward. This wasn't. This wasn't. It was very, they were just, it was warm. It's one thing to be friendly. These people were warm, right? As if uh, you went to their house, right? Um... And so I, I have a strong appreciation for that. So uh, we wrapped up with the final song. I forgot what it was, but I remember my my thoughts were: this is I'm I'm prepared to get a a good word in now. Um, also of note, the pastor came and introduced himself, and I did my research ahead of time. And knew that him and his wife had come from Portland at some point, yada, yada. Um, but I, I always have an appreciation when that happens. Now, granted, again, it was the, the congregation was small enough that I probably stood out. One other note about the congregation, if it matters to you, is... Despite it being about 25 to 30 people, demographically, it was diverse. Like, relative to the demographics in Missoula, Montana, it was diverse. Um, there were also older people and um, maybe not so much like 20-somethings, maybe a couple. But I would say the congregation was... In general, maybe like 35, 40 and up, which I also like. There's a certain level of maturity going on there. Um, so yeah, so that was the congregation. That was the worship. And then um, we went into the sermon, which I had such an appreciation for. We covered Acts 4. Verses 1 through 22, the topic, the message was when persecution comes. Uh, this is a hot button topic for some reason when I broach it, right? I have definitely been in Christian circles where uh, um, the us American Christians are like, we're so persecuted. Do you see, I you can't pray in the schools and it's like, that's valid, but to use the word persecution in relation to what is going on to uh, with the church internationally um, and the the suffering and the um, the real persecution, you know, um, I'm just I'm I'm. Thankful that I, I was in a location to hear a, a, a pastor preach on the subject. And I was curious to see uh, what more he would have to say about it. How how he planned on, um, you know, dis disseminating this information. So, um, yeah, Acts 4, 1 through 22. When persecution comes, the opening question was... What do we do as a church in America? In America, what do we do as a church when we feel uh, persecuted? 
Um, or what are we going to do? Um, because I don't, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say Christian rights are being stomped on. I do believe this is still a Christian nation, uh, which is evidenced by the strong pushback and uprising of other anti-Christian groups, right? That's what we're seeing. Um, and so as time progresses and anti-Christian values um, become political agendas and more of a norm in public spaces, um, I do believe then American Christians will start to experience a higher and progressive level of persecution. I don't think we're there right now, but the question is, how will we handle that as it comes and when it comes, the progression? Um, and so what do we do as a church? We turn to scripture. What did Peter and John do in Acts when that happened? And so he went through that. Um, so what do we do as a church when we are persecuted? Number one, we must continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the scriptures are also below. Um, but what was said, and when they had set them in the midst, they inquired by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders. So what he's saying is we must continually stay in the word, stay connected to the Lord, pursue the Holy Spirit and be filled with him. Um, the note was being filled with the Holy Spirit should be a daily event. Uh, every morning I do a devotional Monday through Friday. It's on live at 6 a.m. Come join Come join us if, if you would, if you're so inclined. Um, but it's really just to get the, the day started. It's to get connected with the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit so that there will be an overflow of uh, love and, and patience for those that I come across, for any of us um, that we come across throughout the day. So being filled with the Holy Spirit should be a daily event, not just a Sunday thing, not just a Sunday and Wednesday night thing. It should be a daily occurrence, uh, being filled with the Holy Spirit. The analogy the pastor used was, um, he was saying he loves peach tea at a particular restaurant. So he's drinking his peach tea and the waiter comes around and keeps just topping him off, you know, walks by, you know. And so the waiter that keeps topping off your drink is the analogy for the Lord who continuously fills us with the Holy Spirit. But we have to make sure that we're in a position to receive it. Number two, how do we deal with persecution as the church? Number two, we must be truthful with the truth. This was relayed through Acts chapter 4 verses 8 through 12. And um, I mean, basically we live in a time where truth can be controversial. Um, while we want to be loving and respectful, part of that is letting people know that your actions are are separating you from the Lord. That's a that's a loving act. It's not loving to to let a, a child eat as much candy as they want. You know what I mean? They they think, oh da 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 and you're the party pooper, right? But there's consequences to eating all of that candy that you just might not know about, right? Is is one example you, I mean, you could use. Um, 
Number three, how do we deal with persecution in the church? We must let our relationship with Jesus be evident. This was relayed through Acts chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. This was my favorite. He snapped. The pastor snapped at this part. The note was, can others tell? Can others tell that you spend time with Jesus? That you've been influenced by his peace, by his joy, by his compassion, by his grace, by his patience, by, have you been influenced by his generosity, by his kindness? Can people tell that you have been spending time with the Lord? It's one thing to be like, oh, I praise the Lord. <laughs> you wear your little cross. So is it is it evident is are, 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 is the fruit of hanging out with Jesus following Jesus listening to Jesus living your life in obedience to Jesus can other people tell you know and that can show up in a in a number of just changed behaviors. I love that. Number four, how do we deal with persecution as a, as a church, as Peter and John did? Number four, we must speak what we see and hear. This is uh, relayed through Acts 4. Verses 16 and 20. And uh, basically, we need to, we, we, we are changed. We are new creations. We need to tell people what the Lord has done for us, right? Has anybody, um, since, since, since the Lord has softened your heart, has anybody commented on that? That's an opportunity right there. Praise God. Praise God. This was such a good sermon. And finally, number five for how to deal with persecution uh, as a Christian. We must be willing to pray the right way. And this was relayed actually through X chapter 4 verses 23 through 31, the takeaway is them folks, they prayed for boldness, boldness to speak the truth in the face of opposition. So all in all, this was a wonderful sermon, uh, a wonderful, welcoming, warm congregation, the music. The worship team lit. Um, yeah, I I I would definitely recommend uh, checking it out. They are there Sundays at ten a.m. Uh, also, they have a nine a.m. pre-service prayer on Sundays. Uh, Sunday services at 10 a.m., a weekday prayer, Tuesday through Friday at 12.30, and a victory and recovery Friday nights at 6 p.m. They also have a food pantry and a clothing co closet Thursdays, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And again, this is Heart Church in Missoula, Montana. Always and forever, when we're looking at churches, make sure that they are a gospel preaching church. If your church is not speaking wisdom and truth um, through Jesus's words and through scripture, if scripture, scripture is not consistently referenced, um you know, that, that, that's cause for evaluation. Um, 
But at any rate, Heart Church, Missoula, Montana, check it out. I am three plus key, your favorite social worker. Uh, subscribe to this channel if you have not already. Uh, comment below if you've been to Heart Church or if you'd like me to meet you there. I'll go again. Uh, like this video and share this video with somebody uh, who may benefit from it as well. All right, I'll talk to you later.